how you doing? I'm Kevin O'Hara for AlcoholMastery.com. Today I wanted to talk about three ways that your alcohol past can shape your future, right? Your non-alcohol future or your alcohol future, depending on what way you look at this. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, click on the subscribe button. Give us a like for this video. If you feel that you've got anything out of it at all, it really helps us. Um, or a, a dislike if you don't like it, and that helps us as well. Um, if you are looking for help to stop drinking alcohol, there's a book, there's a click on the link down below, you get a free book, Have It Some Blows, 10 Steps to Stop Drinking Alcohol. So I wanna start out with this just by pointing out that we're looking at it from two different perspectives. Perspective number one is where you quit alcohol and perspective number two is where you don't quit alcohol, right? Where you don't quit is obvious. You get deteriorating health, deteriorating uh, wealth, your relationships are gonna suffer, everything in your life is gonna suffer if you don't. If you um, do quit alcohol, it's gonna be a different story, right? So, so the first way that I believe your past affects your future is depending on your locus of control. Um, whether you feel like you are in control or whether you feel you're not in control. Locus of control really means that where you think the uh, point of control comes for you, for you, whether it's outside of yourself, while you are controlled by other things, by other people, by other by circumstances in life, or whether it comes from inside of yourself that you're controlling yourself through your mind, through self-control, you know, through your own confidence, through your own abilities and skills, that kind of thing, through the techniques that you're learning. Um, so if you believe that you are in control of yourself and you stop drinking alcohol, it's gonna bring you a lot further than it, it it will be if you believe that you don't control your, your life because if you think that you don't control things unfortunately you're going to go through life with the belief that um, anything outside of yourself controls you you know the climate we're going through the COVID-19 at the moment you're controlled by that right if you have an internal locus of control and you look at that same situation you think to yourself what can I control about this what is my response to this control I know that there's certain things in my life that I can't do now because of this. I know there's vacations I can't take. I know there's, I can't go, go out the door without a mask on, for instance, or whatever in your circumstances are. Um, but also, you've got to think about yourself. What is it that I can do at this moment for myself to improve myself while under these circumstances? If you're worried about your job, what is it you can learn? You know, the, the internet is there nowadays that you can learn so many different skills that will benefit you once all this thing is over with. You, you can learn a lot of skills that will benefit you right now by putting some of those skills into practice, right? Um, you can learn things just by, you know, that are gonna help yourself to, to, um, to reduce the anxiety that you feel, you know, learn how to play an instrument, learn how to meditate, learn how to do so many different things that will lower your anxiety levels. Do you get what I mean? So it all depends on which way you look at things. Um, for me, not drinking alcohol means that you're looking at things from outside of your control. You believe that you're controlled by the alcohol instead of you controlling the alcohol. There is no such thing as controlling alcohol, right? Because once the, 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 once you start feeling the negativity that you are bound to get from, uh, from drinking alcohol, then you must, by the very nature of being in control, control yourself to say to yourself, well, I know alcohol is bad for me because I, I, can, I can see it in myself, you know, I can see it in everything that's happening to me, right? The behavior of drinking alcohol is causing me so much shit in my life, right? So if I really want to control anything, I've got to control myself and say to myself, right, I'm not doing that anymore. Right? So, next thing, the thing about your past that is going to affect your future is uh, the way of looking at your past is depending how you view yourself, you know. Um, and I'm talking about this from the perspective of whether you view yourself as an alcoholic or diseased or something wrong with your genes or this um, part of your environment that has caused you to drink alcohol. Again, external locuses of control, right? Um, if you continue to have that view once you stop drinking alcohol it's going to affect so many different decisions that you make down the road not only now in the moment but down the road um, I've seen people I mean one I have one woman on Facebook recently saying that she thanked the AA for what they had taught her and she was going to stick to those principles until the day she died 
that she believed that she was an alcoholic, she believed that she was diseased, and she needed to go to AA for counseling, or not for counseling, but for support for the rest of her life. So for me, that is out, outside of control. And she'd been doing that for 45 years, by the way, 45 years. That is completely, for me, it's swapping one addiction for another. So if you carry on with the idea that you are being held back because you are an alcoholic and you can't have any more alcohol again, you know, it's gonna screw up your future. Um, the next one I think is the most important one is your emotional evaluation. Do you evaluate your emotions by your thoughts or do you allow your emotions to run wild and you base your decisions on how you feel rather than on how you think? And this is what has to change. You've got to start thinking about your emotions from the top level down. Uh, from, so you have to think from you have to think about your emotions from the top and have the emotions underneath. So there's nothing wrong with having emotions. Good emotions, what we feel good emotions, you know, feeling happy, contented, uh, joy, all of those things are good. You know, they make what we're doing in life worthwhile. They make all of this journey worthwhile. You know, stopping drinking alcohol and pushing ourselves to become the best possible versions of ourselves. That's all made worthwhile by the fact that we're stopping drinking alcohol and we're creating positive emotions for that. Negative emotions are also very valuable because they say to you, stop doing what you're doing. We don't like this anymore, you know. We're gonna keep feeding you these negative emotions, these painful emotions until you do something about it. That's what negative emotions are about. So they're all good. But what you have to use your brain for is to think, are these emotions steering me in the right direction? I mean, you can get a positive emotion you can feel happiness in the moment because you're having a drink. But at the end of the day, that drink and that instant gratification mindset is leading you somewhere where you shouldn't be, right? And it's not gonna deliver you positive emotions in the long term. You're gonna get short-term pleasure for long-term pain. And that long-term pain is going to be painful, much more painful than what you're going through now. So you have to think about whether the emotion is appropriate to what you're feeling and what you should be doing and not just think about now but think about yourself in a year's time or five years time or ten years time right because if you don't you know this is again depending on what you do you know if a lot of people who can't quit drinking are led by their emotions and can't get out of that trap you know they're just emotionally um yeah it's it's one emotion after the other emotion after another emotion they let the anxiety get on top of them and they can't deal with it you know, the only way that they know of getting any form of happiness, uh, a really watered down form of happiness is through alcohol. The only way they can get rid of the anxiety is through alcohol and they can't find a way out of that. Like I said before, we in Habits Unplugged with the preparation module and the transition module and the preparation module is, is designed to help you to get to that stage where you can deal with your anxiety levels once you haven't got alcohol to turn to, where you can start to find little ways of tweaking your happiness, you know, the, the positive emotions, so that you're finding a solution to not being able to drink alcohol, right? You know, even if you're, like I say, everyone should expect a bit of discomfort in the beginning. It's crucial to go through that. But the transition as well is a crucial part of this because it helps you to adapt to uh, a new direction that you're gonna go on, the new journey that you're about to go on. But it's well worth it. If you wanna see the difference between what I'm talking about, uh, go back to my day one video and look at this and look at the difference. I mean, I wish you could see my life, the way my life has turned out now and the way my life was then, the way my mental um, health is so much better now, uh, so much more positive. So listen, if you're ready to stop drinking alcohol, if you're ready to get my help, there's a link down below this video. You can click on that, go to the website and um, go to Habits on Plo, oh, no, sorry, it's on Alcohol Mastery. Uh, leave your first name and email address and I'll send you other books straight away but you have to open it up you have to look at it you have to follow some of the stuff that's in there you know follow all the stuff that's in there and it will make a difference in your life and um, you can also come over to Habits Unplugged um, and there you can get a dollar trial to our program which takes you through preparation and transition and on into which I think is the most important part of this which is transformation um, making sure that you never go back to the way of thinking that led you down that dark rabbit hole in the first place. So listen, take care of yourself and I will speak to you again soon. Onwards and upwards. Bye now.